You know, guys, probably the number one question I get asked, besides how did you land such a beautiful wife, get that one a lot, is how do you find fish on a fish finder? You know, now that it's summer, it's really hot, there's not as many bass around the bank, there's a lot of fish offshore. So I wanted to go through a few different scenarios that I look, for, uh, look, look at on my electronics um, and, and just general places, general structure areas to look for bass. So let's get into it. Okay, so what are you really trying to look for? You know, if I look at a map right here, you know, this, this out here is the main, main lake. You can see all these little points that come out. I love to look at main lake points like that in the summertime when they get offshore. And you just start picking a couple out, start looking at them. But when you zoom in closer, you'll start to see these little fingers these little fingers that come out and that's what you really want to focus on. And I can watch my boat and I can watch it go around all these little fingers and if you pay attention to your side to side um, setup, this is how I recommend doing it if you're trying to get better at this. You know, get your, uh, your sonar on one side and your map on the other and I'm kind of in a, I'm in a gut right here. So theoretically if I come over one of these little fingers I should start seeing some fish. If you're seeing a lot of fish in between that are suspended, those are really hard to catch. Don't, don't get too excited. If you start seeing them on these fingers though, that's when you really need to turn around and start making a cast. I'm gonna slow down a little bit and really start to look because I'm starting to see some bait fish, some scattered bait on the bottom. That's a really good thing to look for, scattered bait. That means the bass have been feeding on those fish. I'm gonna go up here all the way up to you know the shallow part of it. Shallow part looks like it's 12 feet deep, 12 feet deep, and then I'm just gonna go straight out to deep water, and I'm gonna to try to find those fish somewhere in between there. These are little little fish right here. I'm not sure what they are. They could be bluegill, they could be little uh, white bass or or something like that, but they're they're not bass. Hopefully we'll see a bass here in a minute, and I'll show you what that looks like. We got a little structure right there. I'm not sure what that is. Looks like somebody planted a brush pile maybe, or maybe it's a piece of the road. Could be a number of things. Now we're starting to see a little bit of a drop right here. Now this is a bass. That bass is predictably hanging out on that drop. There's another bass right there. They almost look like rocks when they're real close to the bottom. This looks like some sort of piece of structure and there's a couple fish on it. Okay, there's some more fish. These aren't very big. These look like small bass. Maybe, you know, a couple pounders. You see a bait ball above them. And again, look over here. I'm out here on this edge of this point. So that's where they like to hang out in the summer. They go out and they hang out on the end of these points. They'll move up and down. They may move up into 12 feet of water. They may move out to 20 feet of water, just depending on the time of day and where the bait is. But if you look at this scattered bait right here, that means that those bass have been feeding on those shad. The shad are broken up. They've got them separated in, the, in the smaller schools. And that's good. This is definitely somewhere where you would want to fish. So I know there's some activity out here. I know that's good. I can now take this, this depth. I see 12 to 15 feet of water and I can run to another point and look at it as well and start to develop a pattern. But that is what you wanna mainly look for. Look for the bait, look for those points that are coming out, if they have any road beds or anything like that on them. And then lastly, look for the bass. All right, this next example is a pond dam. The pond dams are really just old tanks that cattle farmers made. And when the lake floods or when they fill up the lake, those pond dams stay, stay where they were. And the, the bass like to hang out on them. They're good offshore spots. So there'll be a very distinct up and down uh, signature that you'll see. And a lot of maps will, will show you where the pond is. It's just an avionics right here. You see right there, it says submerged pond. There's also a submerged road right here. So we're gonna idle through here. 
Let's see if we can see any fish that are on the pond dam. This is right off the main lake. There's some shad, that's a good sign. That means there might be some fish on it. Something to hold those fish. All right, I'm gonna slow down right here. It's starting to come up. Right here, we see the pond dam. There's shad that are on it. There's bait, that's good. There's the top of the pond dam. It doesn't really look like there's any fish on it though. Now the best, usually the best place to fish it is on this side, but it looks like actually there's fish that are inside the pond. Okay, so let's see some shad right there, shad right here. Here's the top of the pond dam. And then those bass are sitting right here just on the other side. You know, here's an example of a point that looks pretty good. It kind of goes out, makes a big, long round point, but I just don't see any bait on it is the problem. So if you're not seeing any bait, that's a good indication that you're not going to catch any fish. There's really no reason for those fish to hang around there, even though it might be a good looking spot. You know, it comes way out in the lake and it's got a good drop off, but if there's no bait, there's probably not going to be any fish. They really get focused on shad in the summertime, so that's, that's important to have around. I just noticed a thermocline when I was running down the lake. It's very common to have that down here in the south in the summer. It's basically an area where those fish don't want to be. They don't want to believe, be below that thermocline because there's a lot of, uh, or there's a lack of oxygen down there. All the organisms that sink to the bottom, they end up getting broke down by bacteria and that bacteria sucks up the oxygen. So they don't want to be down there and it creates a kind of like a sandwich, just two layers. All the little microorganisms that live in that thermocline, because it's that border before you get down into that dead zone, they'll actually show up on your electronics a lot of times. If you turn your sensitivity up or like I was just running down the lake and it, it was there was so much water I was covering so fast, it showed up there all packed together. So it looked like it was about 18 to 20 feet. So I don't want to fish below 18 or 20 feet. I'm going to be wasting my time. I just went over this ledge right here and there's so many bass that it almost looks like a brush pile or some rocks, but those are actually fish. It's where we talked about where the thermocline was. And then the, those bass are kind of suspended out here. Those are going to be hard to catch. But the ones that are right there on that break, those are the ones I want to target. See these lines right here? These are bass. That's what bass look like when you are sitting still. They're not arcs. They're just kind of flat lines. They're in 13 feet of water. They're sitting there. There's a ledge that kind of drops off to 20, and they're sitting on top at 13. But that is what bass look like when they're sitting still right under you. Dragging it around, feels like a pretty decent one. Yeah, that's a big bass. 